ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It's been a little while since we've spoken. It's Tuesday, the 20th of February. Beautiful morning. Just shy of 9.30 a.m. Uh, <laughs> feast your eyes on some of the the greatest feed that I'm capable of making. This is the third crop, third crop alfalfa. I did not end up with a lot of it. <clears throat> In fact, off of 40 acres, uh, I ended up with 48 bales. Forty-eight bales, though. That's all I can say. That's the end bale. <clears throat> I put it back against the open face of the next one. But uh, yeah, first two bales aren't very good. One of them I will probably completely discard, and that's the one on the other side of this bale. I got a bunch of pregnant mamas out there. I I don't need any uh I don't need any sour guts. This one's actually not too damn bad though. I'm probably gonna let them pick through that. As you can see, all the first crop is gone. I believe I had somewhere around 220 bales, 230. <clears throat> Those lines were finished off last week. I still have a stockpile at the farm, but uh, yeah. Biggest reason I'm out here, even though I still got a stockpile at the farm, is I want to start selling some of this as cattle feed. We are lacking up here in feed, of course, with the drought we went through. If you follow the channel during the year, you'll have heard me talk a little bit about deer feed and deer bale sales. Uh, <laughs> which didn't go very good this year. Reason it didn't is because of the weather. People are only buying and putting those bales out when they, of course, feel bad for the deer. And that really, with the exception of maybe 10 days this winter, the deer have had a cakewalk this year. Okay, you're probably going to see me out here in about another four or five days. It's going to be in the morning uh, by 8, 8.30. In the next three, four or five days or so, any amount of this little snow that you see right now is going to be gone which we've already experienced once, all snow gone. <clears throat> I've decided to alleviate another step in the spring. And because it's, it's just good to do anyway, I am gonna put down my pure potash uh, here later this week. This is an 18 acre field here of what I'm calling my pure alfalfa. And then of course I have an 18 and a half acre field over by the farm. Um, that's gonna get flooded with potash as well. I took up a little bit of consultation on that and it's no harm, no foul. All it can do is help. Unlike urea, nitrogen, it won't, uh, it'll stay here. It'll stay in the ground versus what I dare say dissipate <clears throat> so I'm going to get that out of the way and uh, yeah, you ought to see that in about four or five days or so. I'm half tempted. Of course, with this weather and everything else, I can't tell you it's been a long winter. It feels like it's been a long winter though. Of course, I'm getting the itch. I'm getting the itch for this coming year. I'm half tempted to put down my P and K on all my grazing ground. 
Uh, I'm going to hold off on that, though. I'm not gaining anything, I don't think, by doing that. Because I'm going to have to come right back in there again anyways and put down my urea. So... We'll wait for a late spring frozen ground morning for my pastures. <clears throat> and hit it all the same. But uh, that's about it, folks. Uh, somewhat slow. Still busy. Irons in the fire never stop. But uh, I have been enjoying a little bit of the slowness right now. Um, picking up a little odd jobs here and there where I can uh, due to the weather and the fact that you're able to get something done for God's sakes. The spring's moisture is scaring me. But I'm not going to start crying in my soup about it just yet. Wise man said that two to three inches of rain in ground that's accepting to it is damn near the same as about a foot or two of snow on top of frozen ground with runoff. You make that make sense? We'll see. Yeah, we got almost 50 degrees coming on by Friday. Uh, the only other feed source I have out here, of course, I'm across the highway, is, uh, uh, what is it, 50 some odd bales, almost 60 bales of second crop sorghum, which uh, I'm looking forward to feeding the cows uh, about a month before calving. Calving per my calendar is April 20th, which means, of course, April 15th. So by, by about March 15th, I'm going to start feeding out that uh, second crop sorghum. Cows are good. As a half-assed cattleman, folks, I've never seen the cows look this damn good. Of course, a lot of it is due to lack of stress, <coughs> due to uh, cold temperatures. Uh, yeah, but the truth of the matter is... They've been eating very well. I actually do have a, uh, I have a group of fat cattle. <coughs> Which is not good come calving season. <coughs> a month before calving starts, they're going to be going on a diet. That diet's going to start with the second crop sorghum. Second crop sorghum, a couple, a couple bales of those a day and then just some, some dry hay. But, uh, yeah, the cattle have definitely ate, uh, damn near ate like a uh, herd, of, herd of dairy this winter. Of course, you know, I had a lot of wrapped feed. I still got a lot. I've got everything you see here, that second crop sorghum. Then I got about 280 bales of fourth crop alfalfa. Then, of course, my dry source as well. Truth be told... If I had to talk loosely, I've got about 150 extra bales. Uh, of course, a lot of that can be a sellable product. I'm not... Uh, I've never had any experience with wrapped feed going into the next year. I've heard... Uh, I've heard some people say it's just as good, and I've had a lot of people say no. Uh, get it fed out or sell it. Um, if anybody has some experiences with that, you know, wrapped feed that didn't get fed out before grazing and was kept intact till the following late fall, please share a comment if you would. Please let it come from some experience though, please. Uh, we'll see what happens.
don't know. That's it, folks. I got to get going. We're going to talk to you much sooner than later.